Warning. We suggest you grab a notepad and a pen and sit your ass down as this shit's about to get informative. Greetings from the land down under. My name is Oz Kid and welcome to my Banished Tips and Tricks video where I'm going to be showing you the best way to get food and a lot of it in order to be a maintainable society, in order to expand and create a huge town. Uh, so as you can see, I don't have a huge population, but I'm on year 19 and I have over 2,500 food and uh, I'm in the stage of everyone dying and replenishing. But don't worry about that, I'm going to show you some tricks in order to uh, extend, expand sorry, uh, how much food you're going to get and uh, survive for as long as possible with the largest amount of food. So here we go. So the first tip I have for you guys is to create what a lot of people call a forest cluster. It uh, consists of a forester, a hunting cabin and a gatherer's hut and two stone houses. Uh, I don't know why it's stone houses but you can create uh, wood houses if you really want. But uh, you pretty much have a forester's lodge placed in a big cluster so then you cut a uh, turn off sorry the cutting option in here and it cre uh, they just plant saplings everywhere and you wait until the whole place is congested of trees and it's a mature forest then you can turn the cutting back on which I've just recently done and it looks like they're doing a bit of damage so I might have to turn that off after the video but as you can see here it's uh, increased how much food these guys are actually producing so it's a good thing oh that's doing terrible actually that's very bad but they're getting leather for me but uh, that's what you want to do in order to increase food production within gatherers huts and hunting cabins and all that sort of stuff um, and another one with the forester clusters is create one just one main road don't create multiple roads off it or else like to diff to the same market or the uh, same town center you just want one main road uh, so then they're not confused and their uh, speed and movement is 25% faster on uh, the dirt roads and 50% faster on the stone roads so that's a good idea to create and as you can see over here I've created my second cluster but it's containing of a herbalist um, which actually I should turn the, yeah, I've got the cutting option off here because there's a lot of patches in which don't have trees. Um, and I think they're doing pretty well. Yeah, they're doing well, but they just need some more trees to increase uh, the production of food. The second tip I can give you guys is to create a market. So what I've done is I've placed it in the city center. As you can see, this yellow circle, uh, that's where it collects and distributes food. So uh, since I got my storage barn and the stockpiles here, the production of food and all that might go to these ones here or the market but if it goes to these ones here the the vendor at the market will go collect it and bring it to the market and distribute it pretty fairly between all the ha all the homes and the, the tailors and the blacksmiths as uh, it's pretty essential to have a market because when you don't have one it's pretty much everyone killing themselves of starvation because everyone's it's everyone for themselves for the food and the resources of the storage barn while at the market uh, distributes it pretty pretty effectively so everyone gets an even amount of food and resources. The third tip I can give for you guys is to create a fishing dock. I have two at the moment but that's because I'm in uh, year 19 and I need a lot of food at the moment but early on uh, I create a fishing dock and put four on but a lot of people create just the uh, forest clusters to start off with and then after they've been done they usually create a fishing dock uh, but it uh, maximizes the uh, settlers diets and the range of food and that minimizes the chances of them getting diseases and their happiness also increases so uh, it's a good idea to have gatherers huts and fishing docks and all that all at the same time but uh, maybe <laughs> not at the start just, uh, just even yourself out now as you can see over here, I don't have any farms going at the moment, but that's because I don't have enough population, like uh, they're still becoming adults, and uh, I'll talk about the school later, but uh, I've got some experiments going on with 7x7s and uh, so forth, but I found three uh, pretty effective farm sizes with like uh, the least amount of labour work and they are a 4x14 farm which is 56 squares uh, with one worker will be done by late summer 
uh, which will get you approximately around 392 food. An 8 by 14 farm, which is 112 squares, uh, containing of one worker, will be done by early autumn and will get you approximately 784 food, which is a, a lot for one worker. Uh, so it looks like that's pretty effective. Uh, and the third one I have for you is 11 by 11, which is 121 squares uh, with one worker, which will be done just in the middle of autumn and will get you a, a bit about 845 approximately. Uh, but be aware of the frost because maybe a few years uh, you'll lose about 20%. So just be aware of that. So yeah, just those are the three most effective farm types I've seen at the moment. Another tip I have for you, which I haven't been able to acquire yet as a trader hasn't given me the option yet, is to get livestock. Uh, they're good ways of getting food. Uh, if you get sheep, it's a good way of tailoring. Uh, also, it's just a better way for their diet and less chance of disease. And if you have uh, disasters on, you've got to be aware of uh, the diseases within the cows. So you've got to maybe create two pastures, uh, just so if one gets infected, then you can uh, move them over to the second one. So then it just stops the disease running in that whole pasture and killing all your livestock. The final tip I have for you guys is about the schoolhouse. So I suggest not building it early on, maybe after 15 years in game um, or even later as the age requirement into work is 10 with no education. Though if you build the schoolhouse, you go, the uh, children go into labour at the ages of 18, which uh, extends the time that these kids could be working. And uh, the non-educated people's production rate is half the size of educated kids. So uh, their production levels are much slower than the uh, educated children, which isn't too bad to start off with, as you want as many people into labour as possible in order to like uh, expand quick enough. But when you expand to a uh, sustainable level and you can a you're able to maintain it, you can create a, create a schoolhouse like I have and uh, start creating educated kids so then uh, their production rates are much quicker and more effective so then they will be able to uh, acquire more food, uh, able to get more resources, uh, are smarter with their uh, production choices and so forth. So that's all the tips and tricks I have for you guys. Uh, I hope it works for you guys. It, it has for me and uh, if you guys want to see more just click the like, comment and subscribe and also don't forget to comment down below what you would like to see. I can create more Banish videos. Uh, myself and a friend are uh, thinking about doing a research uh, series in which we research your theories, the myths, uh, and we're going to try and crack on them like farm sizes, more productive farm sizes, which is the better food source to start off with. Uh, the more productive people, non-educated kids, educated kids, we all understand all that, but we want to crack it and we want to make sure the myths are broken. So uh, that's just a, an example, but comment down below what you would like to see. And uh, I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. See ya.